In March 1986, a piece of legislation called the Australia Act came into force and it was that piece of legislation that finally cut off all the remaining powers of the British Parliament in respect of Australia. And so it was in March 1986 that Australia really became an independent country, completely, fully independent from the United Kingdom. I actually gave a talk just recently on what's wrong with Australia Day. Uh, and I used that title because I wanted to appeal to those people who would respond, of course there's nothing wrong with Australia Day, as well as those people who might have misgivings about it. It's clear that for Indigenous Australians, memory of that um, dispossession lives strongly in their minds. And, and for all sorts of reasons, Australia Day, as it's been celebrated for a long while, is unsatisfactory. I don't think it's as simple as changing a date. I don't think that by itself will do it. 26th of January, the arrival of the First Fleet, the placing of the flag to claim Australia as part of the British colony, that's where our land was stolen. In a way, you can liken it to if a group of your friends or, say, a whole number of your family, say, 30 people in your family were just murdered, and then every year after that date, we had a big party to celebrate their murder. That's what it feels like. I think the tone that's set around Anzac Day in that context of remembrance, remembering the legacy, that's exactly the same type of tone that many of us in the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander community would like set to acknowledge what was lost for Aboriginal people. On the other hand, there are those of European descent who will say, I think equally rightly, that the coming of Europeans to Australia is not something that we ought to be totally shameful about. There's not something that we should feel that we entirely regret. So there are things to celebrate as well as things to be shameful about. Maybe another way to look at it is to think of how could we reinvent Australia Day and recognise that settlement is also invasion and make it Treaty Day. I mean, actually, if we did something really significant and created a treaty, put a new section in the Constitution that recognised that this, for 60,000 years plus, was Indigenous land, you know, the oldest continuing human culture on the planet, and if we recognised that that day was the start of something new, but also the decimation and, in part, destruction of something very old and valuable, maybe that would be a positive thing to do. The way you would solve this is you would actually do those things that make up your identity. You might choose the thing that you feel will speak to your future. For someone like me, that would be the choice to be a republic, because that would be the story of the unfurling of Australia increasingly a mix of those three threads, the Indigenous, its foundational European beginnings, if you like, and then immigration. When we make decisions in that combination about what our constitution should be, what values we espouse, what will human rights mean for us, all the decisions we have made and have before us, they make us Australia. And what we all hope is we make the ones that make us a better people. I think if we need to find a day when we are able to speak to all the threads of us from the Indigenous through that European settlement through to the many peoples who have come and made Australia now, that we're going to have to find another symbolic day that speaks to something that we will collectively agree is important to all of us at that point. Were we to do that, that is the circumstance that would produce a day that you would celebrate because it would be the day that you said, this is who we are, this is Australia.